All right, class, in this video, we're going to talk about a couple of Laplace transforms, um, the properties. And the first one is that the Laplace transform of e to the at times f of t is just f of s minus a. So what does this mean? This means you find the Laplace transform of f, and then you substitute s minus a into it. All right, so we actually already talked about this, so let me just, uh, it's got a really short proof. So, so what is the proof? Well, if I look at the Laplace transform of e to the at f of t with respect to s, so what is that? That's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times e to the at f of t dt. Okay, and this is just a straight substitution, not a substitution integral. So I can rearrange this. So if I can, I can sort of rearrange this to look like e to the minus s minus a t f of t dt. Okay, and as we did before, we're going to let u equal s minus a. So this would be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus ut f of t dt. And then we just said, so basically that's just, that's the Laplace transform by definition, so that's the capital F of U, and then we just substitute our S minus A back in. So this is capital F of S minus A. So there we go. Um, that's going to be particularly useful. So if we need to find the Laplace transform of uh, E to the 2T cosine of 3T, we're just going to find the transform for cosine of 3T, and then replace S with S minus uh, 2. Okay, so that's how we're going to use that property. All right, second one, a um, little bit more involved, and it is also abstract. So the Laplace transform of f prime of t. So what's that going to be? This is s capital F of s minus little f of zero. Okay, so. How do we go about proving that? All right, so the plus transform of f prime of t. This is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times f prime of t. Okay, so looking at the looking at what they're asking us to do, um, and this is the proof here. I should say proof. Looking at what they're asking us to do, we know that uh, the Laplace transform for f is in in this uh, expression here. So, so here's what we're going to do. So we'll, let's first let's make this into a proper limit or a proper integral. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from zero to b of e to the minus st f prime of t dt. Okay, so we're going to need that for part of it, but not the other part. Okay. So we're going to do this by integration by parts. So we're going to let u equal um, e to the minus st and du, or d, sorry, dv, would be f prime. And why are we doing that? Because we know the antiderivative of f prime is f. So v would be f of t and du would be uh, minus s e to the minus s t dt. Okay, so if we substitute that back into this part, so we'll have we've got the limit as b approaches infinity of u v, so that's e to the minus s t f of t, and that's evaluated from zero to b. Okay, and then what's the other part? Okay, so for the other part, I'm going to switch it back and, and get rid of the limit and just make it an improper integral. So this would be uh, integral of v du. Okay, so this would be minus, minus, which is plus s times the integral from 0 to infinity. So I'm switching it back from the limit. And then um, e to the minus st f of t dt. All right, so to finish up, this part is the Laplace, it's S times the Laplace transform for F. So I've got that, 
I've got that term here that I was looking for, that I knew I was going to end up with. So this is going to be S, capital F of S, okay, and then plus limit as B goes to infinity. I've got E to the minus SB, F of B, and then when I plug in uh, 0, um, that's going to be 1, and that's just going to be F of 0. Okay, and as before, so the reason we pair off the exponential function with these things, that's the reason the definition is the way the definition goes, is that that limit's always going to be 0. That whatever I'm looking at here is not more powerful than an exponential function. So my final answer is S, F of S minus F of 0, and there we have it. That's the end.